Hello everybody. So today's video, we will be talking about nodal analysis. And the purpose of using nodal analysis is to analyze circuits using node voltages instead of element voltages. And this method is particularly used in circuits where it's a little bit too complicated to solve for unknown elements when we use KCL or KVL. So nodal analysis is like a three-step process. And uh, the first step is to first determine the ground or AKA reference node. And that's usually located in the lowest uh, location at which uh, the potential is placed. So here we have the circuit right here. And uh, the lowest potential is at this node, this ground node. We're gonna draw a ground node right here to indicate that this is where it is. It is very, very important later on. And then after determining our ground node, the second step includes assigning all the other nodes as node voltages. So assigning all other nodes as node voltages. And that includes just one node, which is this one above here. That would be considered our node voltage. And then for each uh, intersection, we can indicate that as a voltage. So this would be, we can indicate that as V1, and this could be indicated as V2. And then the last step is to assign KCL to was to apply, I'm sorry, KCL to the node voltage. And that would essentially be all the currents entering and leaving V1 and V2 because V1 and V2 are the node voltage. So uh, there's one there's current flowing from here, current flowing from here current flowing from here and current flowing from here. We don't need to worry about this, but when we touch upon super node, then we have to consider uh, the practicality of it. But in this video, we'll be just be touching upon the simple basics of how nodal analysis works. And uh, let's continue on, on how to apply KCL altogether. So uh, first let's write, draw the equal sign first. And it's essential to include where the current is going to be on the side of the on both sides of the equation. So uh, we can assume that on the left side of the equation, we're going to include all the currents that are entering uh, the node voltage. So that would essentially be I1 and I4. So we put I1 plus I4. And on the right side of our equation, we'll include all of the other currents that are leaving the node voltage. So that would be I2 and I3. And generally, uh, in a nodal analysis question, we do not know what the currents are uh, generally. So oh, I'm just gonna place a question mark right here. So to find each and every single current, we uh, we have to find what uh, the Ohm's law equivalent is. So if we don't know uh, what I is, then we have to take the value of V and R that if we are given, we divide V by R to find what our current is. So for I1, we have V divided by R1 and that, well, not V divided by R1 since the current is not flowing from V to the ground. We have the current flowing from V to V1. So I1 would be represented as V 
minus v1 divided by r1. I'm going to skip i4 first because it has a special distinction. But let's continue on onto i2. So i2 flows from v1 to the ground. So that would be v1 minus 0 divided by r2. i3 would be v2 minus 0 divided by r3. And i4, well, it doesn't have a resistor, but it has a current source. And that current source value, which is i, is directly proportional to what i4 is. So that would essentially be just i. And that is our KCO equation using nodal analysis. So here we have a practical example on solving unknown elements in a circuit using nodal analysis. So the question is, if R1 is equal to 2 ohms, R2 is equal to 1 ohm, R3 is equal to 2 ohms, the current source I is equal to 2 amps, and I2 is equal to 2 amps, determine what I3 and V are. So let's solve for I3 first. And what we uh, understand in our previous example is that I3 is equal to V2 divided by R3. So there we have V2 divided by R3. And we know what the value of R3 is, which is 2 ohms. So I'm just going to write it down here. But we do not know what V2 is. Well, understanding the process of how parallel resistors work, we do know that V2 is equal to V1 because they're uh, parallel from one another. And V1 is equal to I2 times R2. And if you guys don't believe me, then you guys can uh, rewind the video to s see that V1 does equal to I2 times R2. And we can solve for what V1 is. V1 is equal to 2 times 1. So V1 is equal to 2 volts. And we already know what V2 is. V2 is equal to V1 um, from the concept of parallel resistors. So V2 is going to be also equal to 2 volts. And now we can plug it in here to determine what I3 is. And I3, given that V2 is 2, I3 is going to be equal to 1 amp. Now we're going to have to solve for what V is. And it's a little bit more complicated, but let's write down what the KCL equation is again. So the KCL equation is essentially I1 plus I4 equal to I2 plus I3. Now, let's see what which currents have already been uh, determined. So we know that I2 is 2 amps. So I'm just going to write it down right here. I3 is 1. And I4 is 2 amps because I4 is directly correlated to what the value of the current source is, which is uh, I. So um, I4 is 2. And then I1 is unknown. We do not know what I1 is, but we can isolate uh, I4 to the right side to determine what I1 is. And later on, I'm going to show you why I'm solving for I1. So if we put I4 onto the uh, right side, so that is uh, 2 plus 1 minus 2, uh, we get 1 amp. Now since we're given what the value of I1 is, then how does I1 relate to V? Well, what we do know previously, I'm going to show you guys before, that I1 is equal to V minus V1 divided by R1. So I1 is equal to V minus V1 divided by R1. And since we already know what V1 and R1 is and we just solve for I1, then we can isolate these three variables on one side to determine what our voltage source is. 
So uh, let's multiply both sides by R1. So multiply both sides by R1 to get rid of R1 in the denominator in the right side. And there we get this equation. And then we take, uh, let's uh, switch sides first. So we have this. And then what we do is we add V1 on both sides. And there we get I1 plus V1. Wait a minute. Oh, sorry, I forgot to include R1 here. So R1, and then we can just put R1 right here. And then And now you can solve what V is. So I1 is 1, R1 is 2, and V1 is uh, 2 volts. And if we take this, we get 4 volts. And we already saw, we have now solved the answer. And the value of I3 is one amp and the voltage source is equal to four volts. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I will see you guys in the near future. I recommend you guys watching the next two advanced videos that are a building block off from nodal analysis and mesh analysis. And that is SuperNode and SuperMesh. So I highly recommend you guys checking it out if you guys want to know more about this topic.